Better late than never I'm back boys and girls. I know I promised this video ages ago, excuse the lightning and everything, it's what time is it? It's quarter past eight here in England, it's dark, middle of winter. It is January the 26th, though I have to apologise, I've got to use artificial light because we've got no light here in the winter, it's very dark. So this video I've been promising for ages, it was going to be titled The Six Month Ownership of the Range Rover Evoque. Now if I say Velar, just ignore it please, you know I keep saying Velar instead of Evoque. So I just want to say thank you as well to everybody who's watched any of my checking and recording, anyone who's watched any of my other Range Rover videos. I'll link them all below, there's about five or six of them and I've had I've never had such a response on a video ever so they've, they've um, been very well received so thank you everybody who's been watching the Range Rover Evoque videos I think I've inspired some people to buy them we'll maybe put some people off Range Rover have actually contacted us about the videos they've been watching them as well so if there's any other questions you want to ask us for Range Rover or should I say Land Rover to see just give us a shout so what I'm going to do the video is going to be slightly different to the way it was going to be when I filmed it which was meant to be six months after owning it I think we've had the car about 10 months now unfortunately the car broke down uh, we were in Scotland a couple of weeks ago and the car broke down so I'm going to do another video explaining what happens if you buy a Range Rover Evoque and it breaks down there's some good and some bad we're still having trouble with the loose trim. Now I'm going to show you a little video which I'll either put at the end of this or I'll insert here. There's a video of the loose trim. I know when I did the 10, was it the 10 things I didn't like about the car or something like that, the previous video. Um, I mentioned one of the bits of trim had come loose on the outside. They're still all loose. You could pull them all off actually, but we're not going to get them fixed until it goes in for a service. Even though it was just in for a service when it broke down, but when it goes in for its next service, we're going to sort out the loose trim. So that's one of the annoying things about the car. There's also a rattle. I'm taking off my list here. There's also a rattle in the back that we can't find out what it is. We thought it was the parcel shelf, so we've done something with the parcel parcel shelf to stop that happening. But it's still happening now, so it's a, it's quite a rattly car. So we are trying to get to the bottom of that. It's also had two recalls. I think now it might have had three recalls and we didn't do anything about them which obviously if you have a recall you should take it in but what happened was when we took the car in when it broke down in Scotland two weeks ago and um, they fixed the recalls there so hopefully that's fixed any faults behind the scenes. Not sure what the recalls were for. I don't think it was anything major. It wasn't anything safety critical or anything so um, they weren't desperate to be done so the vehicle's still a bit of a pain. Now one of the things that really is annoying when you're driving the steering wheel it's got various technologies about to divert you back into the lane if you go over the lines I think it's without indicating. Even if you've got none of those features on the steering wheel twitches so you drive along those are twitches like that and sometimes it's actually quite severe sometimes it pulls you over the side of the road so that might have been one of the things that was recalled but we're not sure. If not, when it goes in for its service, we are going to mention that. If anyone's got one of these cars, or the Velar, which is probably very similar, just bigger, um, let me know if you have any of these issues yourself. Because I'm sure they happen everywhere. Mm, the main, 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 main annoying thing is the screens. I'm going to show you a little video of what the, which screens I mean. Apologies if the screens are really dusty, because after, after you've cleaned the screens, um, with fingerprints and dust, it's dusty straight away. So the screens sometimes don't work. When you turn the car on, there's the pop-out screen and there's also the main screen that has the controls on for the heated seats and the fans, etc. Sometimes they don't just come on, they just they just don't come on at all. You've got to turn the car off, turn the car on, turn the car off. Um, we've got a friend at work who's got a Velar. She has the opposite problem. Hers come on, but when she's driving along, her screens turn off. So that's a bit of an annoying um, little issue with the car. Um, it's nothing major and it does fix itself. Oh, reverse camera, this is my next thing. We got that extra package with about 5 million cameras on it. And when you try and reverse, trying to get the camera on, this is just us doing this wrong. Please let me know again if you know technical things, things about the car or if Land Rover looks at this. Is there something we're doing wrong? You go into reverse, press the camera, nothing happens. There's a 360 camera, there's the under the bonnet camera thing, there's the reverse camera, there's the roof camera, there's side cameras I think was that part of the 360 anyway um sometimes they just don't come on whatsoever and it's rather annoying um, and by the time you've faffed around trying to press the camera uh, turn the cameras on you've got into the space also the other thing that's a bit of a faff on it's got the self park and the thing never works it's absolutely atrocious I'm not going to moan too much about this video but as I say I am going to point out some of the annoying things about the car which all cars have them even if you bought a different brand so it's not um not just a Land Rover thing now this is a tricky one the heated seats, we've got rear heated seats, and we've got front heated seats. When you've had the front heated seats on, when you turn them off, 
they come on again, but they don't just come on again to the one, two, three temperature settings. They come on red hot. Not so it's going to cook an egg, but they come on red hot so you can really sense it. And we're not sure whether the driver side triggers this. So if the driver's side goes on, it only works if the, the seats have actually both been turned on, but we're not sure whether the driver's side triggers it. So you're driving along, turn the heated seats on, turn the heated seats on, turn them off, and then the quite qu quickly, quite rapidly heat up to a rather uncomfortable temperature. As I say, we don't know whether one of the buttons is faulty or one of them sets it off or something. So that's something. So has anyone had that happen on theirs? I've never known it on another car. Um, one thing we wish we did with the car was we wish we'd added um, the active cruise control. What happens when you're cruising along, driving along with the, with the cruise control, what happens is if you get too close to the car in front, it breaks and it sort of guides you that way. I've never really been bothered with it because I don't really use the cruise control as much, but Stephen, he wishes he had it and that's one thing. So if you're buying it, investigate the cost of active cruise control. Maybe have a test drive, see if it's something that would be of any interest to you because that's something that we wish we did put on. Right, on the phone there's an app. So there's a Land Rover app which you can do things like um, lock the car, unlock the car, find out where it is, and when it works it's fantastic. So say if we were sitting here, I could go on the app and go, oh the car's on the drive, at home, unlocked in the garage, um, or locked. When we went to Scotland, again this was another Scottish trip, I think it's a Scotland trip that the car doesn't like. We were in Glasgow, we parked the car miles away from where we had to be because there was nowhere to park. So we parked miles away, we sort of knew where it was, although we knew it was next to a Sainsbury's, but it was like 20 Sainsbury's in um, Glasgow city centre. We parked it next to Sainsbury's and when we went on the app to find out where the car was, it was saying the car was at home. And also when the car was way getting fixed in Scotland when you know when they broke down the other week it was saying that the car was unlocked which is a bit unnerving but the app's good if it works because as I say you can unlock the car lock the car turn the heating on in the morning which is really good but we do have issues with the app as well I don't have it on my phone Stephen has it on his but I don't really care for it um one of the questions I've had is I'm going to do the questions next one of the questions I've had what happens to the door handles and other pop the out door handles when it gets really cold and freezes if it freezes, they do actually get stuck in. What you can do to save the motors as well, when you press the unlock button, all four um, handles pop out. You can actually change that so only, I think, one, two, three, or four pop out. So if you're by yourself, you can press it and only the driver's one pops out, and that would probably save the motors. And somebody actually told me that a Land Rover dealer actually recommended they did that so it didn't wear the motors out, but we well, haven't done it because I don't see the point of having them if you can't use them properly. So that's the bits and bobs of niggles about the car and just a few little pointers really it's not really complaints it's just niggles every car you get you have some sort of niggles so i'm going to go on to questions now which have been asked on various social medias oh, i can use reader and i should get my pen right i'm interested in the evoke as i'm currently looking into downsizing mark does the evoke have the get up and go you know balls and capitals i need a car that has get up and go and can handle the hills well one good thing about the car it really has got get up and go there's no problems even going off-roading in it when we bought the other one well the other one was a company car when we had the previous one um we did actually go on the land rover evoke launch event when it was a brand new model um, we went up mountains and hills and they simulated all sorts of things so the person that's asked this question i will pop it on it will be on the screen now anyway so you'll know who we are it's got um it's got the balls to go wherever you want there's no problem whatsoever with its four by four capabilities either people think because it's a land rover well a small land rover it's not going to have the power to drive through farmers fields and stuff you probably aren't going to want to do that but um we've got no issues whatsoever about having balls and having four wheel drive capability the last one we had which was the previous model we did actually go on the range rover evoke launch day because we were going to buy one then, it's a long story, I'll not bore you the story, we were going to buy one then and we went on the day where you can drive up mountains and they had these artificial hills and things and it showed you all the features and there's no problems whatsoever with it being an off-roader. The last one we had, we did actually buy winter tyres for it but we haven't got them for this one. The only reason we bought winter tyres is we go to Germany at Christmas for, to go to a theme park called Europa Park. Um, and to be in Germany, apparently you need to have winter tyres. So that's the reason we had them. But we don't have them on this one. We're not intending getting them on this one. They've got all weather ones, I think. And um, so we go up, we don't go off road in it, but we do drive through muddy fields and things. That's probably why it's so filthy. Um, and there's no problem with it. If you drove through a farmer's field, all the bits of trim would probably fall off, but there's no problem with um, the quality of the four wheel drive or the balls. It's got a lot of power, so don't worry about that one. 
Have you found yourself washing it much? Smiley face. No, I haven't found myself washing it. I think since we've had it, I've washed it. Bear in mind, it's 10 months old. I've washed it a few times. Stephen's washed it a few times. What I will say is, as I said before, the touch screens don't get as bad with fingerprints as you'd imagine, but the dust on them, you dust them once. I've dusted them today for the purpose of filming a little clip for this video. Um, they get dusty like crazy. So no, the floor's filthy and it's always full of food. Whenever we get a new car, we've got a policy there that we won't um, eat food in it for the first however long but by the first day we've always got crisp packets on the floor and we've always find coins down the side of the seat when we do clean and crisps I think everyone does that don't they? Next question, thank you very question, all the questions are really good. Right next one, reliability, running cost and most importantly does it make you feel as special as a price commanded? Um, I don't normally talk about prices on videos but we've had so many questions people asking us so that I don't think it's any secret. The car we bought was just under £50,000, it was 59, 000, uh, 49,000 and pennies or something so um, that's the cost of it just to get that out of the way. Reliability, mm, it's Land Rover, don't mean to be mean to Land Rover, they've got a terrible reputation and it has broken down. Um, as you know, and as, as I'm going to do a full video on it. Uh, running costs are fine, the petrol's not, it's diesel, it's not perfect, it doesn't give you the miles per gallon, it tells you. If I find out what the miles per gallon are, I'll put them on the screen on the bottom. It does make it feel quite special, to be honest, these days for £50,000, it's a heck of a lot of money for anything, and to spend that on a car which, you know, I wouldn't say we're in love with the car or anything like that, but we do like it. Um, it, just, it makes it feel special because it is a nice car and it does get a lot of attention. The only people that um, sort of like don't like the cars, people that don't like Land Rover as a brand, or people that say because it's the Evoque, it's not a real Range Rover because it isn't the big boy Range Rover. Um, so no, it does, it, it does make you feel quite special. It's beautifully, in, the interior is stunning. I think I said on the other video we're looking at a um, Porsche Macan. And this interior is much nicer than the Macan, in our opinion, we do like it. So yeah, it does make you feel special. Does it drink fuel? Also, can you leave the headlights on and will they turn off when the car is off? Um, it doesn't use much fuel, but like on the last question, this is from Luke Hall, I can read that name. Um, it's from Luke Hall. Um, it doesn't seem to drink fuel. It's not, it's not brilliant. It's absolutely nothing like the tell you. It's going to be, but all cars are the same. No car gives you the fuel economy that it says it's going to. Um, you can leave the headlights on the automatic. So when you turn the car off, the headlights come off. There's a few different settings. One of the things that has got lots of gadgetry is a good lighting package. So if you um, switch the car off, it'll turn lights on. So it lights the front door, for example, or lights the pathway. So you can set the timer. So shut the car off at night time. Lights will come on to light the, the pavement so you don't trip over. And they'll go off after a time that you've set. So it's got lots of good things like that. Do you find the vehicle easy to drive and comfortable? It's very easy to drive. It's quite comfortable. It's not the most comfortable car. But the funny thing is when we had the Velar, sorry if I'm waving my hands around, I always do that. When we had the Velar as the higher car, the interior was exactly the same size. I can't see any difference in the size. The thing with the Velar, the bonnet's massive, so it's huge at the front. And the boot's huge, whereas our boot's tiny. The boot is, I think the boot's too small and the Evoque it needs to be much bigger. Um, so it's quite comfortable. It's not the most comfortable car in the world because it's not massive, but it's comfortable. It'd be nice if it had the armrest, you know, like the big Range Rovers do. It'd be nice if it had that. Um, are there any issues with road noise inside the cabin? Sort of. It's quite noisy inside the cabin. Since it's been serviced, maybe this is what the recall did, I don't know if it did or not. Um, it's not quite as noisy as before, we find, but it is a little bit noisy, but it's, it's a big wide car with big wide tyres. I think that must have something to do with it. Do you find the vehicle practical in terms of luggage, space, passengers? Absolutely not. The boot's tiny. We've never been anywhere where we couldn't use the boot, but we have to ram it in and it's, it's, it's terrible. I think it's really poorly designed boot. It's far too small. Um, we have passengers, even with Stephen's mother, who's only teeny, bless her, little Viv, We'll have to pull my seat quite far forward. You couldn't really have three people in the back, certainly not three adults. Um, Stephen drives with his, his driving seat quite far back, so if he had anybody in the back that squash the legs, there's probably that much leg room so you can squeeze your feet under the seat. So the boot's terrible, I really find the boot terrible. Stephen would disagree saying that we've never had a problem with it, which we haven't, but it is tiny. Um, and we don't have passengers often, so it's not really an issue. But don't buy one if you've got a big family the pram etc because you just wouldn't fit it in the boot now you've had the vehicle six months Oops, sorry you've had it ten months i do apologize ian for my delay are there any additional extras you wish you added to the original order i would like to have added the glass roof 
which is ironic because I get migraines quite bad and if there's a glass roof and the sun's coming in there I get a headache but the Velour had one and I loved it but you know you've got there's a limit to these things you can't have everything so I would like to have the glass roof Stephen wanted what was it he said before the active cruise control um, I think that's all would add to it I think they're the only extras would add do you use Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay Android Auto? Stephen uses Bluetooth because he plays um, audio books and music from his iPhone to the car and his phone's connected. I don't use it at all. If I'm driving, I don't use any Bluetooth stuff at all because I can't, I don't have the phone connected because I just get distracted. Um, and I never play music in the car, isn't that funny? Because it distracts me. So we do use Apple Play. Um, do you have any connectivity issues? Not with Apple Play or anything, that seems to work fine. What's the size of the storage size underneath the gear selector? Um, I'll see if I can get a... I'll do a little picture of it in the morning. I'll do a picture and stick that in. It's about the size of... Could you imagine if I had a shoebox tipped on its end? It is about half the height. That's about the height of it. It's quite narrow because it's got lots of electronics in there. So there's the there's um, a cigarette charger. There's two USB thingies. There's something else I think so it's not very big to be honest you couldn't put a big bottle of water in it or anything like that but we fling like pens and hand sanitizers and stuff like that in it sorry if I'm looking to the other side I'm just checking that the camera is still recording okay apologies if this goes on for 16 weeks as well how sensitive is the steering it's it's nice the steering's nice apart from the twitch that's the only problem it steers really nice actually that's one of the things we like about it it does drive nicely next question any infotainment issues at all? How's the gearbox? Turbo lag and real world conditions. I've heard it's laggy in normal and is it more responsive in sport dynamic? Oh, I should have asked Steve this, I don't even know what that means. The infotainment system's fine. Um, we don't have any trouble with the stereo. Sometimes the stereo turns itself on, blares music from Steven's phone, even when it's not being touched or anything, but that's probably user error. Um, the gearbox is fine. I don't think there's any turbo lag. Tell you where there was turbo lag when we got that Macan. God, it was terrible. No, there's no turbo lag on this. It's fine. There's the driving of it, it's actually fine. There's nothing nothing to complain about the driving of it particularly, so that's fine. Um, is it more responsive in sport and dynamic? I don't know. I'll ask Steve and what I'll do, I'll put the comment, I'll type the comment in the bottom. I'm going to make a note of that just like, like I'm at work when I'm doing meetings and things. So I'm going to make a note of that, Robert, because I haven't got a clue what that even means. Um, next question, I'm delighted to listen to your reviews. Oh, thank you, that's nice of you. I want to see the response I've had on these Land Rover videos. I do YouTube videos of like when we go on holiday and things. We might get, I don't know, 40 or 60 people viewing our videos. If I do, um, like a, the things that are really popular on YouTube for me, um, or when I do a video, when, we, when I bought a new bag, I buy like designer bags and things, put videos on about those, they get good views. The ferry trips when we go over to Europe and the ferry they get loads of views. But these Range Rover views, one of them's got something crazy like 230,000 views in it. So thank you everybody. Um, so thank you to Andrew for your nice comment. I'm delighted to listen to your reviews. I'll say that again. It's nice to see more honest reviews and your effort at the... and your effort at the slick YT crowd. I don't know what that means, but I think you're saying I do a good video. I'm very honest, why would I not be? I don't work for Land Rover. We didn't get the car um, complimented by Land Rover. They didn't pay for it, so I can be honest. I don't want to be too negative, that's the only thing, but people want to know these things. I don't want to put anybody off buying the car either, but also I want people to know realistically what does happen. Oh, I need to write a question down, so I'm about to forget. I'm going to put something else on the end. So people keep asking about the door handles. And do, can you close them um, when you've got your hand in? So I did a little test before, so I've got a video of that as well, I'll show you. Next one here. Hi, I should have read these first so I know what I'm saying because I'm terrible at reading out loud. Hi, I love your videos. Oh, thank you. May I ask you one thing? When you have the 360 camera mode on and you're moving forward or backward while you're parked, does the black space on the left of the screen give you the image of where you are going? No, it doesn't. I think. When you've got... The 360 cameras on, if you reverse, is it when you reverse when you go backwards? When you're moving forward or backwards, when you've got your parking, there's a black space on the left. I'll do a picture of that and I'll put it in. I'll try and show you what I mean. I'll do a video of that tomorrow night when we go out um, and I'll show you what it looks like. When you do the 360 cameras, you get a tiny little box, which is a bit rubbish. I think it's because of the orientation. Oh, something's flashing. Does that mean something's going to go off again? Um, so the 360 cameras, you only get this tiny little screen. When you do the normal reverse camera, you get the full screen. So this, I'm going to sort that one out tomorrow because that one may be a bit tricky. I'm going to go and see what's flashing on my camera. It wasn't the battery. I think it's telling us 
I've been uh, recording for too long and I'm boring everybody. It was flashing with because I've been recording for over 10 minutes. That noise is Stephen upstairs if you can hear it. Um, so what was the next question? That one I'm gonna, as I say, I'm gonna look into that one. My Range Rover Sport screen works perfectly after a software upgrade. Well, fingers crossed ours will as well because we've just had a software upgrade. So fingers crossed. Um, I can't, I think it means I can't believe your car came with the old software. I don't, I don't know if it did or not, to be honest. One thing that does come up is really annoying. You can connect it to the internet. But every time you start the car, it says, sign in, Stephen, because it's in Stephen's name. Sign in, Stephen, and you sign in or whatever again. Sign in, Stephen. It doesn't seem to rem remember that you've logged into the car, which is a bit annoying. Um, so, next question. These knobs, <laughs> which we love because we like the knobs, and we'd like more physical knobs. <laughs> How rude. The Zach Valentine. Um, is easily the best. Oh, that's something I've said in the past. Hello, Mr. Stephen. I'm doing my range room. Actually, can, I actually can ask you a question. Stephen's there, but he's got no shirt on, so we're not sure. <laughs> right, can I ask you a couple of questions, Stephen? Stephen, this is this is a professional setup here. Yeah. Right, I've got a question for you. Uh -huh. um, right, the question is: any inf any infotainment issues, which I've said no to? How is the gearbox turbo lag in real world conditions? I've heard it's laggy and normal. And is it more responsive in sport or dynamic? Sport mode, never bothered with. Never used the sport mode. And the manual flippy flappies, never bothered flippy with. Flippy flappies, I think we've, we've turned them off. Yeah. We've turned them off. Um, well, they only come on in sport mode. All right. You can put them on in normal mode, but we've turned them off, as right. I say. So what was the other? Is, turbo? It, is it laggy? Turbo laggy? laggy. Turbo laggy is it? Does not. Turbo lag as such when you're driving, mm -hmm. but it does suffer as the very early Evokes did with a little bit of a sluggish pull away mm -hmm. from stationary. Um, it's not it's not a massive issue, mm -hmm. but it's not sharp. Right. It, it does need a little bit of a wind up. To it's pull not as away. bad as the McCorn was. Well, that was a different problem. That wasn't a sluggish pull away. That was the need for revs in order to get any, any power. Oomph. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Am I dismissed? Yes, you're dismissed now because <laughs> nobody wants to see just my face looking at you. Thank you, Mr. Steam. Try to make loads of noise because I'm using my professional camera setup here. Right, right I'm going to read this question again. Close the door, please. Right, <laughs> he's actually quoting something that I said on another video. So I've said. <laughs> So it must be me, I didn't even know I've done it. Zach Valentine. Um, it's a funny question though. You've sent it six months ago. Right, the question the the quote that I've said apparently is I'm still recording, yes. These knobs which we love because we like the knobs and we like more physical knobs is easily the best line I've ever heard in any video ever. You should be on innuendo bingo. Well that's the winning question. <laughs> Thank you, I am quite smutty. I didn't probably do that on purpose, maybe a little bit, but not much. Next question. Stephen's coming back, so I'm going to pause while Stephen goes upstairs. <laughs> Might be reflective surfaces in this room. You know? <laughs> I'll not tell you what he's been doing. Stephen, going to go upstairs, please, yeah. because my camera keeps tripping out because I'm recording too long. It's a 16 hour, I can see you're still there. It's a 16 hour presentation about the Range Rover Evoke. Stephen, go out of the way, please, because you're going to make noise going up the stairs. Why not? Yeah. Right, next question. Hi! Hello, I really love your videos. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing review, smiley face. I had owned two Range Rover Evokes before 16 and 17. Yeah, well, that must have been the registration of them. I was going to upgrade to the new one, 2019, but eventually I got a Porsche Macan S. Oof, I like the Porsche Macan. Is it the new one? There is no for the new one because we test drove the old one, it was horrible, but the new one looks delicious. Oh, it's a Porsche Macan S 2019, so it must be the new one. And I have to say, it was the best decision. Oh, it's cut off. I ever made, I believe, I presume you said. Well, if we had our time again, we would probably bought the Porsche Macan instead of the Land Rover. Would you agree there? No, I wouldn't, because... I mean, it's probably different with the more powerful engines. When we were looking, there was only the... It was a rubbish engine, wasn't it? engine, which was hopeless. Okay, thanks for your comments. But anyway, enjoy your car. It's a beautiful car. Tell us all about it, what colour it is, everything. Um, next question, the gear box knob is the only thing I like in my Evoque. I take it you've got the one before, the little dial thing. I much prefer that to the shifty knob thing. The shifty knob thing's um, 
it's it's like going back a stage, it's going back in the back in the past instead of going in the future. So I agree. It's a shame that's the only thing you do like Nevo because they are nice cars. We've had I'm not gonna answer that question because I was gonna ask the question, would we buy another one? Right, your accent is very difficult to understand. Is it turbocharged? Yes it is. I am I've said this before in videos, I get excited and talk fast. Stephen's making noise upstairs. Come from Newcastle upon time in England and we are called Geordies and Geordies are known for talking fast. If you've ever seen Geordie show on MTV, that, that's where we come from. So I do apologise. I try and talk slowly but I can't help it. So I do apologise. Um Oh, this is John John Wilshire. Too much rambling, off topic, and read the manual. Most of these annoyances are fixable, and engine cuts out because it's the part hybrid. Is it part hybrid? I don't know about that even, if that is true. Low speeds, it uses the electric motor. Apart from that, good work, fella. Any co any um, comments are welcome, even if they're constructive or destructive or just one saying hello. So I don't mind anybody saying anything that isn't saying how fabulous I am. Everyone says I sound like Mrs. Doubtfire on camera. Hello! <laughs> it's true mind. It's because I get excited. Right, next question. My last car was an Evoque and my wife never got over the fact it didn't have grab handles. Oh my god, that's so annoying. You know when you're in the front seat and you hold onto the thing above where the window is. It hasn't got grab handles. Why? What an absolute stupid design. I don't think the last one had either. And when we had the Velar the other week, it was like a luxury to have a handle. Our other cars convertible, that doesn't have one either. Either, but it's so annoying. I totally feel the pain mark out. Honestly, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, she's annoyed that doesn't have grab handles. Something like she likes to swing on lol. <laughs> Looking at this new new revoke, I see trouble ahead with the techie stuff. Shame because it's a supercar. Yeah, the the issue we think we've got with it, it all looks fancy touch screen and spinning round this, spinning round that, fancy dials. We think it's probably powered by some crappy little memory chip thing that's made for like two pounds. So it's We've said this all along, there's too much technology in the car, there's too much going on because of the problems with reliability. Um, it's only broken down once, so it's like the end of the world reliability, but there's so many niggles with it that I read before and probably millions more that I've forgotten about. So yeah, the, what we've said is we'll, we'll normally keep a car a few years, but this one we're not going to keep that long. Anyway, that's me rambling on. Thanks for your question. Um, try setting the display screen. This is probably a response to something I said on the video some time hundred years ago. Try setting the display screen to auto mode. It's bright white in the daytime and black at night. No problems with the sun on the screens. See what you think. Oh, thanks, Stuart. I'll try that. Um, I think I was probably saying that the the sun reflects on it. But actually, to be honest, it stopped doing it. I don't know if I've got used to it. Or well, I was just being a fanny and saying that it was reflecting off the screens. There's loads of how-to videos on the Land Rover website. Great videos and awesome car thumbs up. Well, thank you very much for that. Oh, this is one called from Karma. Why are you hiding... Oh, I remember this one from ages ago. Why are you hiding your nameplate? I don't hide my New York nameplate. Congrats on the car. Um, the reason I hide the nameplate when I do videos is you can get lots of information off somebody's number plate. It's not some top secret thing, it's not going to tell you my bank account details. But if you get someone's number plate, it tells you all about the car, probably more about the owner that you want to know, and you can probably find out some stuff that people don't want to share. So even the video I filmed today regarding the um, the whether the boot opens itself, I covered the number plate off that. It's just personal security, to be honest. It's, it's not the end of the world if anybody saw it. Obviously, we don't drive around with it hidden, but just on videos, I do hide the number plate just for a little bit of security. Right, I don't know if the question's on here, but there was a question asked um, a dozen times. Did I ever get the hang of um, when you kick the back of the car, when you don't kick the car, you flip your foot up on the car and does the boot open automatically? Did I get the hang of it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go outside now. This is a bit of a fib because I filmed it before. I'm going to go outside now and film it. So come outside, come outside. I'm going to show you whether it works or whether it's still a load of crap.
Well, honestly, it's still a load of crap, isn't it? So, I know it's just my technique, probably. The car was a bit close to the house before, so I couldn't get in. Next question is, very nice video. Thank you very much. Very nice video. What model that Evoque looks very good. Might just be my next car. I will put the thing on the bottom of the screen because I'm not sure what the model is. So, keep watching all the videos and everything. If you think about buying one and see what you think of it. Next question, nice and smooth. Oh, thank you. Oh, he means the car. Nice and smooth, give it six months, laughy face. And I did actually reply to this one with a laughy face because we know the, the history of Land Rovers and cars in general. So I'll give them that one, Mr. ASP. Um, next car, lovely, but I prefer the park lights bigger or rather how it is on the previous versions. Nonetheless, it's the state of the art. Fist bump. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. By park and lights, do you mean... The reverse lights, I'm not sure about that, but the lights are quite small and it is quite sleek. The funny thing is as well on these cars, hang on, I'll get comfy, with these cars, even if you buy the big full-on Range Rover for 100 odd grand, you don't get um, fog lights on them. It's standard, you've got to buy them separate, but the fog light, it's about the size of that little area and they're absolutely tiny, so um, I think it's because of the shape of the car, I think that's why they've got slender lights. Um, Viva La 48 vol Volt Micro Hybrid System. I'm not sure what that means. Is that something my car's got? I'm not sure. Next one. <laughs> Just reading these off quickly because the video's about an hour long. I was editing it last night and it was far too long, so I do apologise. Next question. Very, very impressive. Could you please tell me when come to India? I don't know that, I'm afraid. Um, I'm sure it'll be out in India sometime. I don't know what the uh, worldwide distribution is on them, but hopefully it'll come to your country soon. Had a few people asking this question. Background music look like Bollywood film song. I think that's in relation to the one of the Range Rover videos where I put music on the background. And the same person says, please tell music name. So I'll try and, if I find the name of the music, I'll put it on the bottom. If not, if you use Shazam, that app where you can uh, play music and it'll tell you what the song is, you could maybe do that. But I'll try and find it out for you. Next question. <laughs> Three words. Tesla Model Y, shame on you Land Rover for not offering this car with an optional all-electric powertrain. I'm sure there'll be an electric one coming out sometime. Funny enough, the, the Tesla, I'm not sure what the Model Y is, but the Tesla, we did think about one of those, but it hasn't quite got the long enough range. We'd like it to have about, I don't know, 400 mile range before we consider one. Overpriced Indian Chinese car, fair enough. Um, next one. Theodore Three Bears, that's a nice name. I hope they told the owners, meaning me I guess, I hope they told the owners that the engine cannot be repaired, only replaced. $15,000 for piston rings. I got right, I got right, oh, I think he means I got rid of mine um, and went for a brand that couldn't, that could be repaired. Well, I'm not sure about that. I'm sure they can repair them. It's probably expensive, but I don't believe that they have to throw the engine out if something goes wrong with it. But I haven't had that experience, thankfully. Hope you got yours fixed. Um, I love driving this car. It's one of the most beautiful and robust cars, robust cars on the road. I agree with you. It's a very beautiful car. Please that you enjoy yours. <clears throat> Next question. My dream car. Love, love, love. This review was amazing. Oh, thank you. That's lovely to hear. So in depth, like ways better than the professional car review channels. Actually, I've got a lot of comments on the videos, which I'm not reading out today. If you look on my videos, a lot of comments saying they preferred it to the. Um, professional videos and one of the videos of mine's got more than one of the main car channels views on it which is quite impressive and quite chuffed at so thank you very much for that I just you know I just waffle on as I am now I practically did my own review watching you <laughs> like that one it's one of my favorite comments I do remember that one from ages ago Rod Hunter I have a friend that lives in Wooler and you share the same accent. Great review. Cheers, Rod. Well, as somewhere else in the northeast, it's on the coast, I do believe, and they do have the same accent as us, so like the north easterly accent. So, hello there, your friends in Wool, and hello, Rod. Next one from Parish Twenty. Hi, thanks for the comprehensive review. Although the review is six months old, it's even older now. Sorry. Um, my belated question is exactly in relation to that, which is, would you still buy the car having driven it and lived with it for that time? Um, hello there, thanks for your question. Um, I'm pl we're pleased we got the car. We did talk about this last night and whether we should have got the Porsche instead. Um, we don't really have any regrets with it. We wouldn't get another one. We wouldn't buy another Land Rover brand, I don't think. Although Stephen quite likes the Jaguar F-Pace, is that the big one? which is the same sort of brand. It's actually got the same mirrors. If you look on the back of the mirror in the Evoque, it actually says Jaguar on it, um, which we know it's the same parts. You'd think they'd put a different um, sign on though. You'd think they'd have a different brand on it. Um, would I still buy the car? 
we wouldn't buy another one but we don't regret buying this one because we do like it and we have liked it the 10-ish months that we've had it so next one's quite cute you are so sweet best review i've watched in a while a little smiley face doing that thank you um i don't know if i can class it as a review or just me chuntering on i suppose that's what a review is i just don't give you all the dimensions and all of the techie stuff that nobody really cares about next one so pretty and love your description of things <laughs> Something I must have said, it's in the speech marks. Your legs are raised up a bit. That sounds dodgy. Class, love it. <laughs> Thank you. That's from the Keys81. I think that's somebody from Instagram. Next one from St Etienne. This, this chap's commented before. I presume it's a chap. Chap S chap. Fellow Geordie here. Hello there. How are you, the lads? Fellow Geordie here. Nice camera work. What did he use? Then in, in brackets, waits to hear iPhone. Um, the video. Well, most of the videos I film, I do actually film on my iPhone because it's easier. I'm using an um, SLR camera for this video, mainly because it's got a screen and I can see up here what's going on and see whether it's recording and stuff. But it's such a faff on to set up and I don't know if the quality is any better than the iPhone, to be honest. So all the videos I've done in the past, I'm not exactly sure which one he means, but this was nine months ago and this is when I printed this off. So it's probably ten months ago. Um, most videos I use an iPhone, but I also use a GoPro, which I don't use very much because I find them a bit shaky. The GoPro, I've got one of those DJI Osmo gimbal little cameras, the little skinny camera, looks like a Mars bar. And I've also got this DSLR camera, but most of it was filmed. Actually, the Range Rover opening event was filmed on the gimbal thing, so that was done on a proper camera, and the other one was done on my iPhone. So there's your question, St Etienne. Thank you very much. Next one, beautiful, lots of hearty emojis. I think they mean my lovely face and everything, but maybe they talk about the car, but either way, thank you. Oh, this is a funny one. Looks toy. <laughs> I think that means that it looks like a toy car. It does look a bit like a Tonka toy car, so I do agree with that. So if that was a, a nice compliment or not, or just a comment, thank you for that. But it does look quite toyish. Next question, I'm doing these quickly, so fingers crossed I'm not in turbo mode. Next one, beautiful car, nothing beats a Range Rover, many happy miles ahead. A little round of applause in the car. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's a beautiful car, it's an absolutely lovely car, we we'll love the look of it. It's smart as a carrot, many happy miles ahead, so thank you for your well wishes. Next one, you sound like the rock friend of Thor in The Last Avengers. I'm going to have to Google that to see what it is, because I haven't got a clue who it is. In fact, hang on, I'm going to do it now. So I need to go to Avengers, he's called the rock friend of Thor. Let's have a look. Yeah, sure, little video. Yeah, I'm actually a thinker. I'm a being. Sounds a little bit like me, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now I know who it, who it is. At least I should have looked at that ages ago. Really. Right, we've only got two more questions. Uh, I'm leaving on a negative note. The last, the second last one. In fact, no, I'll leave it on. I'll put it on this one first. Nice, but Mercedes A Class ambient lighter is way better. But OFC, this is overall way better. I don't know what that means, but. Um, I've never, we have had an uh, A-Class Mercedes a few times as higher cars, but we had them in um, sunny countries, so I never even drove them at night, so I never saw it, but yeah, the ambient light, light might be better. The thing we'd like this one to do is if you could scroll through the colours. This light that's behind us, this blue light here, this is one of these things, in fact, look if I do now, I can change the colour of it. Well, actually, it looks quite nice and red. And it, what you can do, you can scroll, listen to different colours, I'll do that now. Hopefully it won't upset the video too much. So that should scroll between different colours. I've probably done it wrong. And I'm going to do it again. Yeah, that'll scroll between colours. And this is what they should have had in the Range Rover, in my humble opinion. Last question from Jimmy Nelson three months ago. I hope reliability issues won't occur. Well, we all know how that went over when the car broke down. But that's just the thing with these cars. With any car, it can break down. Whether it's new, old, Land Rover, Mercedes, Porsche or anything, it'll all break down. So that is the last of the questions. So now I'm going to get on with the rest of the video now. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. So what I'm just going to say, um, what people have asked and what I've asked myself, what happens when you press the button when the door handles go in, can you jam your fingers? So um, I'm going to show you a little video now of whether you can or can't jam your fingers.
Right, I hope you liked that little video. I did. I should have tried it with a sponge first, so I didn't trap my fingers. But what I did, I put my finger and I did nip it a bit. But what happens is when the handles go in, I know I'm on turbo charge mode because it's like nine o'clock and I want to go to bed. Um, the handles go in, and what happens is they do go fully in. They go in as well, your fingers are in there, so it stops that. But it goes limp, so the cap, the handle goes in, and it doesn't like nip your hand or anything. It did the first time I did it, but I think that was just me being a little little sheepish about doing it because I was worried about hurting myself and worried more about damaging the car so um that'll tell you a little bit about the handles well I hope you like that little video a little update I might do these every six months actually um we've decided we were going to keep the car three years that was what we we're going to do because it's no point getting rid of a car in its first year because it's lost like all of its money just about it's just lost 20 percent or whatever so we're going to keep it for three years but since it had the accident future video coming um we've decided we're going to probably keep it two years I know if we keep it two years we may as well sell it just before the warranty but what we won't do is keep it after the warranty because the um what happened the other day in Scotland, it was it was quite a major thing and that would have cost a fortune, it would be an absolute nightmare, so we're going to keep it for um, two years possibly, so we've got maybe another year of it. So if anybody wants to buy a Range Rover um, Evoque, <laughs> maybe selling it privately, we'll probably actually do part exchange, but now I'm just waffling. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little video, I hope I didn't waffle on too long. Normally it tells you on the camera how much time you've got and the battery's going to go off in a second. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'm going to um, stay tuned because I'm going to film the video about what happens when your Range Rover breaks down but even on a positive note we do still like the car the car's really nice it's, it's got some niggles it's had one breakdown a couple of recalls but we do like the car if you are going to buy one don't let me put you off but if you've got any more questions ask away or you can put them on instagram i'll put my instagram and twitter on here as well i'm pretty more responsive on there because they come direct through to the phone quicker any questions let me know any comments or anything any comments or concerns just let me know give us a video a like a thumbs up um, subscribe to my channel, all those kind of YouTuber things that people say, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Just a little update on the um, when you kick the boot to open. I'm sure there's a name for it, gesture tailgate. Just an update on the gesture tailgate. Tonight we've been out and about, um, and Stephen showed us how to do it properly. The reason it doesn't work for me is because I'm not doing it right, which doesn't surprise us. You have to put your foot quite far underneath it and give it a hoof up. So anyway, that's, this is the video now that I'll show you. It being done correctly, unlike my previous videos where I've probably not done it right. It is different to the last one. I think you have to wave your hand and um, your foot in a different place. But not to worry. Here's the video. First time lucky. Very clever. You don't need to be good at Let me have a go. Oh. Put your foot under, you're just, you're dabbling and dabbling up here. Do you have to go further in? Yeah. Woo, it works. Ta-da! Do it again, any further in. Oh, we've got the knack now, everybody. Yeah, knack it. Oh, let me show you.